This is a synoptic question, so it's going to be using parts from different parts of the syllabus. So you are going to need to potentially derive a new equation, bring in equations from different parts of the syllabus to solve a problem. Okay, so this is an interesting one. Interesting one with an electron gun in a tube. Okay, and we're going to get this circular path. Okay, so think about all, pretty much all of particle physics involves us deflecting um, particles in circular paths because then we can have them in small areas rather than linax which are taken up incredible long um, distances. So an electron tube can be used to def uh, demonstrate deflection of electrons in a uniform magnetic field. The tube contains very low pressure gas, so very few particles inside, no collisions for them. Um, and the electrons are emitted from electron gun traveling vertically, this is the electron gun there, traveling vertically upwards towards a region of, into a region of uniform horizontal magnetic flux density. So let's just talk about magnetic flux density being into and out of the page, I would suggest. Okay, so show the unit of magnetic flux density in Tesla is in SI base units is this. So mag flux density in, is B in your formula sheet. Okay, so you can go to any of your equations in the formula sheet with B in it, and you can work down into SI units. I think the simplest one it's going to be F equals B I L, and they quote that as F equals B I L sine of an angle. Um, we're talking about horizontally, so sine of 90 is 1, and that's dimensionless anyway, so we don't need to worry about that just now. So rearrange for B. B is F over I L. And why use this? Because mo most of this is already in SI units, when I talk about the units in a second, okay, which is a Newton over an amp meter. Um, amps current meters is length. All I need to do is take newtons down to SI, F equals MA, so kilograms meters seconds to the minus two over amps meters. A little bit of cancellation and rearranging gives me kg A to the minus one seconds to the minus two. Cancel the m's essentially. All right, that's quite a straightforward one really, difficult kind of context for you to get your head around, straightforward question. Next bit then, why do they follow a circular path? Here we go, all of them flowing in a circular path is all about, boom, left hand rule, get your left hand out. Why is, what is that? We've got a magnetic field current, which in this case is the flow of electrons in that direction, and the force, you can see they are all interacting at right angles, and that's the key thing there. So, um, the force is due to a flow of charge, brackets, I'm going to put uh, the, the moving negative charge of the electron. just in case he's going to pick me up on not saying V or I or something like that, due to a flow of charge interacting at right angles with the magnetic field. Okay, in other words, Fleming's a left-hand rule. So this means that the force is always towards the center of a circle and now they're just looking out for the terms. This means it's a centripetal force causing circular motion. Okay, um, magnetic flux density is varied while the speed of electrons remains constant. The following data is obtained. Okay, so we know we're talking about um, motion in a circle now. Okay, we know that it depends on certain things. One of them is speed. Okay, another one might be mass, etc., etc., etc. But we're just told these. The theory suggests the, the radius of electron path is inversely proportional to magnetic flux density. So we're saying R is proportional to 1 over B. 
Analyze the data and comment on this suggestion. You may use the table to show any calculated values, so calculate some values first. What calculation can we show to do this? Well, if r is proportional to 1 over b, then rb will equal a constant. This is why it's very good to be able to use proportion in different kind of ways. So I'm going to calculate rb here, okay, which gives me Pretty much, I'm happy with that. They equal a constant. I've got myself a mark for doing some sensible maths there. Okay, well, analyze the data, comment on this suggestion. I would firstly have suggested the data supports this. Um, it says comment on the suggestion. And here's my beef with this question because it doesn't really give me a clue what type of comment it's gonna be. Okay, it actually is looking for an evaluative comment. Okay, but I guess at the end of the paper, when I'm searching for four marks, I'm probably thinking analyzing data gives some evaluative points. I think that's acceptable. Okay, so the data supports this. R is inversely proportional to B. I'm happy with that. Probably that's going to be my second mark. It's a suitable comment. And then the next points, for my next two marks, I'm thinking, well, how many data points do I have? Okay, if I'm wanting to show that R is inversely proportional to B, then, gosh, I'm going to want at least seven points to say I've got a straight line relationship between R and 1 over B. I've only got three points, okay? There are only three data points. So this is not a strong conclusion. or it's not a clear trend. Okay, three data points like that. They could also be a curve if you look. Uh, I need to, to do some more data there. And lastly, well, let's talk about how close they are together. How precise are they? It ranges from 5.06 to 4.94. That is a range of 0.12. Whatever the unit of that would be, okay. Um, well, how, how close together are they? Well, we can give that as a percentage. If I calculate a mean, mean of RB is 5.013. Uh, delta X over X is our percentage uncertainty. 0.12 over 5.013 gives me 0.024, okay, um, which is 2.4% uncertain. But I have made a bit of an error there because actually it should be half the range. So my delta x should in fact be 0.06. Um, but I have given some indication of spread. I don't know whether, exactly whether they would allow that. So 0.06 over uh, 5.01 is a percentage uncertainty of 1.2. Percent. I'm a bit more happy with that. So, you know, they're quite close together. Um, I think that's, that's valid, but they definitely need more data points to strengthen that kind of conclusion. Anyway, I hope that helps. I know this is a kind of new thing, and there will be questions using percentage uncertainty at some point in your tests that you get. So I hope that was really useful to you. Exam questions are a great way to practice for exams, but don't just do exam questions. There's, if you struggle with that exam question, then you probably need to revisit the theory for that topic. So do that before you have a go at some other ones. If I've made any mistakes, then correct them down below. And if you've got any more questions, then down below as well. Maybe you guys can help each other out. And there should be some um, playlists around here and a 
subscribe button if you like that and you want to see some more as and when I bring it out. All right, thanks a lot for watching.